Okay, so today's pepper review is going to be on the pimento pepper. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the pimento pepper. Uh, that's the name that it goes by. I know pimento it means pepper in uh, another language, maybe in Spanish or something like that. But it, this is just the name of the pepper that they called it, and they call it a pimento. It's probably not too much different than a Bulgarian rattan pepper or something like that. But the name of this pepper is called the pimento pepper. Okay, so this is the third year I've been growing these. And they pretty much all do the same thing. The plant heights really don't get too much bigger than 12 inches. I think I had one plant that got up to around 14, 16 inches tall. They really stay that small. They are not a heavy producer. They only put out a couple of peppers per plant. And generally, that's usually it for the year. If you can winter this plant over, you'll probably get a lot more peppers out of it. So the plant profile on this plant is generally a regular leaf plant. There's virtually no purpling on the, on the stem at all. Just a tiny slight off color at the node. This is a sweet pepper too, by the way. And my hands are burning because I got Hunan's hands. Even though I wore gloves, I still got Hunan's hands. But what else about this? And so let's pick one and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is kind of a small one. These can actually get probably about as big as an apple. I've had them. Uh, maybe not as long like this as an apple, but definitely as wide as an apple and flatter. And they get all these nice pumpkin convolutions on the top. And they got these nice trilobes on the bottom, so that's basically three chambers. So you got seeds in each one of these chambers. And it's just a really nice pepper. This would really make a good pickling pepper, to be honest with you. The bigger ones, you're probably not going to want to pickle those. You just use them for your cooking. But when they're smaller, and you will get smaller ones, like random, you'll get some bigger ones and then some smaller ones, like cherry pepper size and stuff like that. Those you'd probably want to definitely pickle. Throw them in your sweet pickling jar where you're doing all your sweet pickle, your sweet pickling peppers, and then, you know, you got your hot ones, so throw these in your sweet ones, or you could throw them in your hot ones if you want. But, all right, so let's take a closer look and let's do a taste test. Okay, so we got an easy one to do today, and this is called the pimento pepper, and I know it's a sweet one. <laughs> it's actually a pleasure to eat this as opposed to eating all these hot peppers. Not that I don't like hot peppers, it's just eating hot peppers to do these reviews starts to take a toll on you after a while in ways that I'm not willing to discuss on camera. It, they do take a toll on you after a while, and eating some of these sweet ones is a, is a sweet relief gives me a break from the hot ones and I can uh, enjoy this review as I do it. So here is the pimento and you can see it's got the three lobes on the bottom and the very top of it you can see it's got all these convolutions and it's just quite a beautiful pepper. I've grown these now for like three years I believe and every year it seems to only put out at best between four and six peppers at best at optimal conditions you'd be lucky if you got 12 peppers out of this plant it's generally a small plant it's nothing uh, huge it's not a heavy producer so you'd have to grow a lot of these plants if you're looking to get a you know a good portion of these peppers for whatever you're going to do in them pickling or selling them at a market or something so anyway just make sure she's clear of spider webs let's give it a bite okay it's a sweet pepper there's no heat so we're not gonna we're not gonna cover the heat. No heat. As you can see on the inside, those are the seeds. I'll finish the rest of that pepper and then show you the whole core of what it looks like. So it's sweet. Now I've had these where they were very sweet. If you leave these on a vine until they turn blood red, I mean these things will turn really, really red. 
you leave them on the vine until they're absolutely red as you can believe, they get so sweet that it's unbelievable. I mean, they get apple sweet. Now, this is sweet. It's just not like you're eating an apple. I mean, you literally couldn't tell. If I ground this up and made like something where you couldn't tell what you were chewing and gave you that and gave you an apple, you'd have a hard time discerning which one was the apple and which was the pepper. It is. It really does get that sweet, and it does have a nice apple -y type flavor to it. Sorry about the sweating. It's like 90 degrees today. Really hot. And the, in, and the inside of that greenhouse is absolutely cooking. So let's take another bite. I'll try to get into the flavor a little bit more in detail. Okay, so here's the seed core. I'll give you a better look at that core. That's what the seed core looks like. So if you could even just get one decent sized pepper out of this for saving seed, like you just leave one to go all the way to its full ripening, I would say do it and save the seeds. You'll have so many seeds. You can plant, oh my God, you could plant almost an acre with this many seeds. I mean, it's just a lot of seeds on here. Two peppers, you're planting an acre, you know. It's incredible. You got a lot of seeds. Maybe not an acre. I know I'm exaggerating, but you could plant a lot of plants. So, again, it has that apple sweet flavor. It's a very nice cooking type pepper. I would say this would go with any kind of cooking dish at all. This is great for pickling. This would be really great in a salad. This would really be great for table presentation. So when you're putting stuff, fruits and vegetables out on the table and you want to kind of, you know, you're having like a Thanksgiving dinner and you want to put some fruits and vegetables and gourds and maybe a pumpkin. You got a lot of family coming over and you kind of want to put some eye candy on the table so people can like look at things and give, you know, not everybody staring at each other from across the table, you know gives people something to break the tension a little bit and you want to add some things to your table this is a really good thing to use as that it'd be really interesting because a lot of people would look at that and say what is that a red pumpkin uh, what what exactly is that so that would be nice for that it's it, you could use it for anything in fact i have one more and i'm going to use that one for tomorrow i'm going to make eggs and potato and I might make a little bacon with that. And I'm going to use that pepper to uh, fry with my potatoes. And I'm going to pick some onions. Because my onions are coming in. So I'm going to pick some onions. I'm going to make some fried eggs, bacon, and potatoes in the morning. And I'm going to use this pepper. I tell you right now, it's going to be a good breakfast. Because this pepper always tastes better than a bell pepper to me. Always. The pimentos are, to me are like the king of the sweet pepper taste. The, the, the pimentos and the giant marconis. Now, the giant marconis are very, very sweet pepper and are very large, and you're, you're, they're a totally different type of pepper altogether. But that's a sweet pepper, too, and that's up in the king of peppers. This is like a king of sweet peppers to me. This one, this one and the um, Bulgarian Rotund, I think. That one's another one very much similar to this, very slightly different. I don't have any of those growing this year, unfortunately, or I'd love to, like, show you the comparison. But this is definitely a must for anybody who's looking for a different type of sweet pepper for their entrees. All right, so anyway, that's your pepper review for the sweet pimento pepper. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Take care.